And Mike, surprisingly, despite the fact that it has rained steadily all day long here and the field has not been covered, the field conditions and the footing are pretty good here, and there's a good reason for that. This is called sports grass, basically a synthetic turf that uh, grass grows up through, but the entire base is sand. And so this thing can absorb six inches of rain per hour or about 15 inches in a day. And right now, if you calculate what we've had rain we've had all day long, it's going to get a test tonight. But right now, I'm talking to Bobby Bowden, some of the Florida State coaches, and John L. Smith. The footing here, very good at the start of this game, but it's sure to deteriorate probably by halftime. Mike? Dog over at the airport, which is right down the street here. They've had over an inch of rain. They expect two more inches. The heaviest bands of rain are going to come through here as we move on through the second half. It's been a steady rain since 6 o'clock Eastern time. For the 423rd time, a Bobby Bowden team takes the field ready for kickoff. Phenomenal number of games. Of course, second to Joe Paterno in major college football wins. Joe has 330, Bobby 327. On the other side, John L. Smith took over a 1-10 in team and then went 7 wins, 7 wins, 9 wins, and 11. He's different. He skydives. He wants to climb mountains. <laughs> he's a pretty good guy, and he's really turned this football program in the right direction. Louisville won the toss and has chosen to receive. Rare that we see a game where the team that wins the toss does not defer the option. Well, the reason they probably did that is they probably think the weather might get even worse right now in the second half than it is right now. You might as well get it while it's not bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> This was one of the toughest tickets for Louisville football in a long time. And considering the driving rain and the fact that we still see headlights and traffic waiting to come in, I am amazed at the number of people that are here tonight. And they are allowed. As Xavier Batia gets set to kick it off to Roderick Clark for Louisville. Number four, FSU. And off we go with Thursday Night Football from Kentucky. Clark up the middle with an opening. Roderick Clark has Batia the kicker. All the way to the 35. What a start for the U of L. <laughs> 63 yard return. Anytime you're a big underdog, the best thing you can do is keep the crowd in the game early when you're at home. Look at the blocking. Look at somebody had to break down on Florida State's coverage team because there was nobody in the lane. And he was able, Clark was able to find that, picked up a couple blocks, and he did the rest. But where was the coverage? The key to that situation is they split the two, the defensive players from Florida State. They both went the right direction. Boom, hits a little gap. Remember I told you, be careful with big plays and the rain. It oh, happens yeah. all the time. So Clark, who had a touchdown return earlier this year with a big one there. Henry Miller, the senior, carries for about three first down yards. Dave Ragone's the quarterback. This is 30th start. He has 22 wins. Strong arm, lefty from Ohio. He has the ability and the knowledge to thrive, but he doesn't have the supporting cast. At least not right now. They play one back and three wides. Miller, the senior. Dorsey, very dependable wide receiver. Joshua Tinch also plays basketball. Dante Stillman from junior college has fit right in. Ronnie Jett's a good tight end. Florida State has struggled stopping the tight end this year. On second down, Ragone's going to keep it and go. He does this a lot and never slides. Taken down by Stanford Samuels, third and three, coming up. Here's the battle in the pit. Offensive line is Ragone's biggest problem. Four new starters. Coons, the only returning starter. These guys have to play well tonight against the Florida State defensive line. Lee, not like the old dominant bunch of the past, but they are talented. Florida State defensive line features number 45, Darnell Dockett. He has 42 tackles for losses in his career. That's number two all time. And they've had some great defensive tackles at Florida State. He's the best of the bunch. They don't have those ends that were guaranteed first round NFL guys in the old days. Needing to get to the 24, it's third and three. Ragone throws for it. Incomplete. Tried to get it to his tight end, Ronnie Jens. From here, it would be a 45 yard field goal. And they're going to send out their strong leg kicker, Nate Smith, the junior, to try one. Mike, one thing for sure, this is against the wind. When I was down on the field, as I said before, Kirk, the wind is really blowing. This is against the wind. And sometimes when he tries to kick a long field goal like this, it doesn't get high enough. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't block it up the middle. Florida State's been excellent with blocks. That ribbon's a little limp right now. The flags up top are really blowing. From 45, online. And good. Bowie by the long 
kickoff return by Roger Clark. Three for the Cards. Number four, Florida State. On the field next. Allows Nate Smith to into the wind make a 45-yard field goal. And for the first time all season, Bobby Bowden's team is behind. Wade Talachka, junior from Trinity High School here in Louisville, set to kick it off. Calvin Gardner, Leon Washington, waiting for it for the nose. Gardner takes it on a bounce and takes it out of bounds at the 22. Good coverage kick for Louisville. How about the opening kickoff, Coach? Well, Mike, as we're talking before, Robert Clark comes up, you'll notice that the Florida State players separate, and it's like a trap play, Kirk. Once they separate and he finds a seam, he's gone. That's a missed assignment. Yes, he got exactly. out of their lane or, you know, opening kickoff. You're on the road, number four team in the country. Yeah. You, you can't make a mistake like that. That's just somebody breaking down early in the game, and it made it easy for Clark to find that lane. But here's a stupid thing, okay? Here is a dead ball personal foul on Louisville that will give Florida State even better field position. And this is Louisville's problem. This is an undisciplined team. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. 15 yards, first down. You got to play with your head if you want a yeah. chance to knock off one of the big boys. It's been a problem, you're right, for them uh, when they get excited about a, an opponent who's highly ranked. They played Florida State a couple years ago. How many times do we see them with late hits, 15-yard penalties, hitting Chris Winkie time after time? Louisville is the most penalized team in college football at 12 per game. That's inexcusable if you're a good team. Chris Ricks, the sophomore from California, in the shotgun. Gets it going in the hands of Antoine Bolden, who looks to throw and throws it downfield for Gardner, who caught it at the 28-yard line. Seminoles get your attention with 33 yards right away. A little bit of trickery here to open up the game, to get the ball. Remember Anquan Bolton, he was going to be a quarterback last year before the injury. This is just an athlete making a play, throwing it up in the air. Gardner realizes the ball is short, comes back and makes the play. Gallantrell didn't even see the football. Great play, individual play there by Talmon Gardner. 33 yards of the pickup. Louisville with defensive confusion. Trying to get 11 on the field, and now they are okay. One back, couple of tight ends, and here comes Greg Jones. This is a Greg Jones kind of game. He only gets a couple of yards, but he will get tough yards between the tackles tonight. And Chris Ricks, the starting quarterback for Florida State, the sophomore, 12 and 4 as a starter. He's working and succeeding at staying in the pocket and becoming a team leader. With him, you mentioned Jones, who averages six a carry. Nick, Nick Maddox will spell Jones. Washington, a true freshman, a good fullback. We've seen Bolden's ability and Robert Morgan, plus the third receiver, Tommy Gardner. Patrick Hughes and all the tight ends have caught a grand total of one pass this year. You're not going to see much of them tonight. Second and nine. On play action, off the corner blitz. Rick's got away and he's a very good runner. Minus two yards. It all started with the corner blitz from Josh Minkins, the junior, out of Willingboro, New Jersey. The rest of the Florida State offense, this may be the best O-line in the country. Even with Alex Barron in for the injured Ray Willis, the best is Brett Williams, who's going to have a tough, tough test tonight from Louisville's talented defensive end. Well, the front four is going to have to hold up against the run. Thomas Lopez and Lowe, but of course, Dwayne White. When Florida State drops back to throw, like right now, in passing situation, 99, maybe the best defensive end in college football, has to make plays. And he's got to step up his play. Sure does. He has not been a first-team All-American in the first four weeks. Third and a dozen, and they run with Jones. He gets to the 23. Florida State's going to try a 40-yard field goal here. It's interesting. In these conditions, both teams have a big play. Yeah. Not much from the offense, but just enough with the big play to get him in field goal position. But that, that call also tells me that Bobby Bowden and his staff respect Florida, uh, the Louisville pass defense better because they didn't try to chance for a turnover. They were trying to get three. That's a compliment to the Louisville defensive secondary. 40-yard field goal attempt for Safia Fafia. The sophomore who's missed two this year. Will it twirl in? Yes, it will. Sabiet Bathia. Good from 40 yards. He's 
proven that he's a strong leg player. Now four of four from beyond 40 yards this season. And we're all even at three in the first 440 of the opening quarter. A chance to remind you what comes up college football Saturday. Iowa against the team many people now say are the team in the Big Ten. Penn State at that noon Eastern on ESPN. And our primetime game presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Alabama taking on Arkansas. This is Alabama team that needs to find the running game after, of course, the uh, frustrating injury for Ahmed Galloway fans. What a good running back the young man is. You know, when you talk about Alabama and Bear Bryant, you talk about Bobby Bowden and chasing Joe Paterno all fit in. They both passed the great bear in the last couple of years. Bowden sitting at 327. Jopa on ESPN Saturday goes for win 331. Penn State is such an approved team. Yes. That schedule, their schedule. They have Iowa. They're on the road at places like Wisconsin, or on the road at Wisconsin and Michigan and Ohio State. And of course, Michigan State in the year. They're an improved team, but that's a big test for them. That'll be a big win if they can beat the Hawkeyes. And ever since Joe Paterno put that Zach Mills in a quarterback, they've been a very fine football team. That's a good game to watch if you want to see a good left-handed quarterback. That Zach, Zach Mills is a player. Good combo quarterback. Yeah, nice. There's Roger Clark. We mentioned the 100-yard kickoff return for touchdown. Last week, 64 yards on the opener. Let's see how FSU covers this one. Clark's going to get his hands on it from the seven. They try the same way. And Roger, the redshirt freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama, takes it out to the 27-yard line. When we set up Florida State's defensive front, the back seven, this may be their problem area overall. Michael Bulware is Peter's brother. Kendall Pope's the leading tackler. The middle linebacker, Terrell Hudson. But, Kirk, this secondary still has a lot to prove. Well, in it? the last two years, it's been the defensive ends and the corners. Stanford Samuels, Rufus Brown. Can they step up tonight when Dave Ragone drops back to throw to his receivers? And the safeties are inexperienced. They're very athletic and very talented, kind of typical Florida State. But they've got to avoid making mental mistakes tonight. Drive start from the 26 for the senior from Ohio, Ragone. And up to Henry Miller, not going very far at all. Jeff Womble, nose man, pushed the pile forward. College football Thursday night on a rainy evening in Louisville, Kentucky. Florida State has dominated the series all time against Louisville. This is their 14th meeting. The Cardinals won the first. The Seminoles the next 12. By an average score, well, it's pretty dominant to be honest, by about 32 points a game in the last meeting since Bobby Bowden took over as FSU's head coach. Ragone rolling, wasn't open deep, and he's going down. Jarrell Hudson, the senior out of Homestead, Florida, comes up with his first sack of the season. Well, we sat down with Dave Ragone yesterday. He said, you're going to see me do something different in this game that I haven't done all year. It's going to be one, two, throw, and if the throw isn't there, I'm going to throw it out of bounds and avoid the sack. We've had too much pressure. I'm trying to compensate for an inexperienced offensive line, so in this game against this defense, it's going to be one, two. If the guy's not there, throw it away. You can see it's easy to say that, but when you get out on the field and the bullets are flying, you go back to what's natural to you, and he's trying to make plays. Needing to get to the 36 for a first down. No time. He takes off. And gets chased down from behind by Eric Moore, the sophomore left end. So it's three and out for the cards as Ragone couldn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Big concern for Louisville tonight is obviously will Dave Ragone have time to throw when they want to throw. It's going to be a lot of rollouts, some bootlegs, and a quick game. Get back and get rid of it. Otherwise, he, he will not have a chance with those longer routes downfield against Florida State. But this is what Florida State does as well as anybody. They come after that kicker. Wait till last year. Boy, he, that's slow. Oh. He's going to get one blocked tonight if this yep. keeps going on. It takes a Louisville bounce. It will be down at the 44. Excellent field position for the Knowles after just a 32-yard punt. Louisville. Through the time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. Inside the 35. From the 33, Joe. Short side, and the Cardinals are there waiting for him. This Josh Minkins, number five in red, is sticking his nose in there on all these run plays when he's on the field. He's coming up making plays. Bolden and Galishaw have been going back and forth all game long. That was a third and ten pass where Bolden didn't care for Galishaw's comments. Boom, with the left cross. 
So this has been going on. That was early. That one got called on Bolden. And here we are in the second quarter and 42 and number four meet again. This time it went on Gallishaw, 15 yards. Bolden out. Talman Gardner's in the game. I feel like Florida State setting, up, setting them up for, for a pass downfield. We'll show in corner blitz. It's a run with Jones. Minkins hit him in the front. Dave from behind. Rod Day, the leading tackler. Bring Jones down. Gallishaw now in it with Gardner. So it, uh, you I'm can, it's now. I'm it's a fine line. Can I go down at halftime? <laughs> can I go down and talk to him? But is it a fine line because you need to play with a chip yeah, on your shoulder if you're you Louisville, right? Yeah, they should. But every play, if we were in the if we were in the Mountain West right now, they they call that trash talking a little bit closer. <laughs> I love how we go from conference to conference and it's just kind of like whatever. Some teams can talk and some teams can't. These players have a good idea of what they're allowed to do with the officials being so consistent. Florida State hasn't converted a third down yet. by P.K. Sam. It's going to be very close to a first down. Let's check the spot. We're going to have a measurement, I believe. That's the first completion of the night for Chris Ricks, and it is an FSU first down. And it was a perfect automatic call. He come up on the line of scrimmage. Watch Chris Ricks as he looks to the right, looks to the left. He calls it automatic and hits a nice, soft pass. Now, Kirk, he aimed that ball, boy. Yeah, he, he did. And you know what he saw? Third and four, and he saw the corners off yeah. at eight or ten yards. Yep, automatic. Good play by Chris Ricks. Jones, nowhere to go. Florida State offensive line is very good. Louisville's hanging in there up front so far. What helps them is right now they're, they're, we haven't seen that true threat with the passing game, so it's allowing Louisville to concentrate on Greg Jones and outnumber Florida State up front. Earlier, Brett Williams injured his ankle. That's uh, an ankle that was injured uh, before this game, and he was lost. And this might be the center Marambo who's down for FSU. It is Antoine Marambo out of Miami. Touched on that offensive line. And I, just three or four years ago, Florida State had an offensive line that was more of finesse kind of tall, athletically built offensive lineman. Now you come in and check him out at, at offensive line, and they're 6'6", 295, 6'3", 336, 6'4", 300 pounds, 6'6", 325, and 6'6", 310. These guys are mammoth. This is like a Michigan State offensive line. Over the sideline, you'll see number 63, Dave Castillo. He's snapping the ball to Chris Ricks. This used to drive me crazy as a coach. When you lose the first team center, you always were concerned with the first snap that they went in there. But that's a smart move. Ricks and Castillo over You gave there. us this one a week or two ago. Who was it? What, what I don't know, but that, I tell you, if I could get the first snap off, yeah. I always felt okay, but it's that first snap. First snap. <laughs> of all the players on the offensive too. line I hated to see go down was my center. Yeah. Well, Marambo so comes the, off. So does the quarterback, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see the center go out. Bad weather also. David Castillo's hurt. That play where Marambo was hurt was a loss of yards for Greg Jones. The back is always going forward, always makes positive yards. As a matter of fact, uh, it's the first time in a while that you can say you've seen a Greg Jones carry, not gain yards. The junior's averaging six per game. That time, technically lost a yard. It's the first time in his last 59 carries. the center exchange here with the quarterback on second and 11. It's fine. Rich stayed in there, make sure he had it. Toss to the end zone. Touchdown, FSU, Talvin Gardner. Good throw by Ricks and Gardner, the senior out of New Orleans. He's caught a couple of touchdowns already this year. Gets his third on the season. Javier Bethea on for the extra point. And he gets it. So Florida State was struggling offensively, then goes down the field. Eight plays and 77 yards. 
23 yards to 21. The senior, Tompkins Gardner, Gardner in the end zone for the third time this year. And FSU on top, 10-3 on college football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Precision. Skill. Craftsmanship. Goodwrench. With GM certified technicians and advanced technology, no one knows your GM vehicle better than the pros at GM Goodwrench. It's good to know. It's Goodwrench. any four Michelin tires and get a Samsonite wheel carry-on upright and the new Michelin North America Road Atlas free, a value of over $120. Visit MichelinMan.com for your nearest participating Michelin dealer and get rolling. But hurry, this offer ends October 5th. What color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste whitens your teeth with just one tooth. Our whitening guide proves you can go from here to here. Arm & Hammer, whiter teeth, one tube, guaranteed. The heat is on when mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four, four. You've got to be insane. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City coming to you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the remnants of Tropical Storm Isidore, making it a driving rainstorm and a sloppy game between number four Florida State and Louisville. A reminder that ESPN's college football Saturday begins with the Big Ten. Penn State's lost to Iowa at home the last two times. We'll see what the Nittany Lions, number 12 in the country, can do. Then our primetime game will be Alabama and Arkansas, presented by U.S. Postal Service, 745 Eastern, out of the Southeastern Conference. Due to time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. Jim! Hey, Mikey. There's our TV, 57-inch widescreen. It's even better than last week. Can we take it home this time? Therein lies the problem, Peter. The minute we take it home, I'm going to see it on sale. You know, with Circuit City's Price Match Plus, you don't have to worry about that. Huh. Don't worry, take it home. Because if you find a lower price within 30 days of purchase, we'll give you back 110% of the price difference. Circuit City, we're with you. Does this mean my video game system can come home too? <laughs> certified technicians and advanced technology no one knows your GM vehicle better than the pros at GM Goodwrench it's good to know it's Goodwrench 
second and ten. Lost the handle on the snap, and it will be third and 12. Okay. Third down. What do you like here? Third and a dozen for Louisville in field goal range. Really been going to the three receiver on one side look where there's it's almost like an eye formation down to the bottom of the screen and then isolating Dorsey at the top of the screen. It's time they spread out the three receivers on what will be the bottom of your screen. Five in the pattern, four we're going. Take it off, he's at the 10, he's at the five, and he gets leveled at the two by Jerome Carter, but he has the first down. This is third and 12. This is this is the good thing about having an experienced veteran quarterback. He needs to get to the three-yard line. He knows where to go. Watch him lower the shoulder and pick up the first down. That is experience. And that's a good job by Ragone. You know, the offensive coordinator, John Tennis, was at Washington. He told us that Dave Ragone reminds him of and Joey Harrington in his competitive nature. And he's showing it tonight, boy. What a competitor this young man is. First and goal from the two. They started from this spot in the first quarter and could not score. Markers are down for delay of game. So it'll be first and goal from the seventh. Mm. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, it's still first down. Fifth penalty on Louis. Child football Saturday on ESPN. I was one of the last two trips to Happy Valley. See what Zach Mills and company can do about that. And then Alabama and Arkansas in the SEC. That should be a good one. Our college football Saturday presented by the United States Postal Service at 7.45 Eastern after the scoreboard show. After the delay of game flag, first and goal from the seventh. Good job with a low snap. Sack. Back to the 20. Alonzo Jackson almost drew a holding flag but ended up getting the sack. Right pass, Jonte Woodard. Well, Woodard, the left tackle, just can't handle the speed of Jackson on the other side. It's, he goes to the outside, gives him a swim to move, and then once he gets by him, it's a hold and a sack. He's lucky he didn't get called for the hold, but that's Florida State football right there turning a defensive end loose on his passing down and making a play. That's a nice job there. Five on the penalty, nine on the sack, second and goal from the 16. They were third down at the 15, a snap ago. Rago fires incomplete. Hot shot for Damian Dorsey. Just couldn't hang on with a lot of traffic, including Brian McFadden, the sophomore from Hollywood, Florida. The reason why Brian McFadden made a great play on that one is the man ran the post route he came in with his left hand to knock it down. If he used his right hand, it would have been pass interference. That was a brilliant play by Bryden and Fadden that time. That time they doubled the end, so Jackson couldn't get in there. Play 12-12 of the drive. In field goal range. FSU rushes four. Ragones is looking to run. Get the whirlpool going for Dave now. So he's going to be sore, sore tomorrow. Number 90, Kevin Emanuel. We thought he got beat up in the opener against Kentucky. This is only four, four minutes to go here in the second quarter. But, Kirk, these are much better yep. hits. On this I know. He's going forward against Kentucky. They kept knocking him back yeah. and back and back. They rushed it. They hit him 22 times yeah. in that game. But this time, at least he's moving forward. Nate Smith made a 45-yarder. This one's going to be 26. Winded his back. Tough angle, and the rain. High snap. And that one gets through. <laughs> Stefan Laporte, the holder, did a nice job. Richard Owen's snap was coming back. High heart and wet. He cut it down. Big of a four-point game. Back to Ken Towers Air Pressure Support Group. Today's topic, self-esteem. Monique, would you like to begin? 
I'm in Michelin, the creme de la creme. Nah. <gasps> Howdy, boys. I'm Dave, a hard-working bee of good rich. Redneck. I'm William, a uniroyal. I'm value price. Yeah, right. <gasps> Gary, what's wrong? I'm unbalanced and misaligned. Nothing but noise and vibration. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. These special tires came from Ken Towers. You're just another tire. Uh, uh, look. Support your tires. Get them at the good tire guy. And get them. Need help on your job site? Rent Bobcat equipment from Bobcat Enterprises. Bobcat Enterprises rents Bobcat track loaders and excavators, Versa handlers, workmate utility vehicles, Bobcat attachments, and more. And right now, you can get 30% off the rental of any Bobcat attachment. So if you need help digging, drilling, grading, sweeping, spreading, breaking, trenching, grinding, tilling, lifting, raking, or whatever, rent Bobcat attachments and get 30% off now from Bobcat Enterprises on Middletown Industrial Boulevard in Louisville. ESPN College Football Thursday Night, presented by Circuit City. Brought to you by the Flame Broiled Whopper from Burger King, America's favorite burger. At BK, you've got it. And by Gateway, where you've got a friend in the business. Back in the largest city in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Louisville. The Cardinals answer the Florida State eight-play, 77-yard drive with a six-and-a-half-minute drive, leading to Nate Smith's second field goal of the night. Well, good job by Florida State's defense. Twice Louisville has had the ball inside the five-yard line, first and goal, and they held Louisville to uh, one time. They forced them to go for it on fourth down where they didn't make it through the interception, and then that time, of course, the, uh, the field goal attempt. So Louisville realistically could have 17 points up on the board right now, but good job by Florida State's defense. An Nate Smith kickoff. Well, wait till last guy kicks in. Tom and Gardner still on his feet, and he's brought down the 23 yard line. FSU takes over at its own 23 when we come back to Louisville. A4 with Quattro all-wheel drive. Yep, this is going to be fun. An eight-hour flight with a screaming stiff neck. How about grabbing a Thermacare heat wrap? Open it up and put it on before your in-flight nap. It gets warm and stays warm for eight hours. Deeply relaxing tight muscles. So circulation flows in, helping pain flow out. Hey, by the next time zone, woof, you'll be upright and out of sight. All day long. Thermacare heat wraps. Find them in the pain reliever aisle. Most people, when told about the idea of Staples, thought it was kind of crazy. Fifteen years later, Staples has over 1,400 stores around the world. When I joined Intel, I really wanted to join a company that was at the edge of high technology. We're making things that are more complex than human beings have ever made in the past. I would hope that people would think about Cisco in terms of changing the way the world works plays and learns. And to be a part of that is tremendously exciting. One of the hallmarks of an entrepreneur is you turn adversity into opportunity. Great companies learn how to manage during growth, but they also learn to manage during the tough times. And if you love what you do, I think it gives you the ability to see what might be in the future. You always have to dream the dream. And that's the vision part. I like to think we're at the center of the world's economy for the decades to come. Staples. Intel, Cisco, listed on NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 company. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City coming to you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The remnants of Tropical Storm Isidore making it a driving rainstorm and a sloppy game between number four Florida State and Louisville. A reminder that ESPN's College Football Saturday begins at the Big Ten. Penn State's lost to Iowa at home the last two times. We'll see what the Nittany Lions, number 12 in the country, can do. Then our primetime game will be Alabama and Arkansas, presented by U.S. Postal Service, 745 Eastern, out of the Southeastern Conference. Due to time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. My son, Brian, and I are making sure everyone in Chicago is eating good. Hello. Hi. Hi. 
How you doing? Hey, thanks. You need some nice hot chunky soup to fill you up right. Introducing Campbell's Chunky Herb Roasted Chicken with Potatoes and Garlic. Big chunks of savory roasted chicken and loads of veggies. Are you a good player? He's a great player. Do you want to see? New Campbell's Chunky Roasted Favorites fill you up right. Never follow. Want a close shave while avoiding razor burn? The new Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. Extreme 3. Get close, not burned. Is razor burn ruining your morning? The new Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. Extreme 3. Get close, not burned. What do y'all mean? Where's the dip? Only Tocito Scoops have the bite-sized bowl-shaped design that's perfect for dipping and dunking every time. I thought that was a myth. So however you like to dip, there's only one dip lover's chip. I own this court. Yeah. No, no, I really own this court. You guys gotta go. Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. We are back here during the timeout. Jack Childress, the ACC official, ACC crew, he was asked to come over to John L. Smith, and he did the right thing that a referee should do. He came over to the coach and talked with him. I don't think John L. really enjoyed the give and take. He wanted to say it was an uncatchable ball. The referee said no. First and goal at the two. Seventh major penalty on Louisville in the game. Now, Florida State's without a timeout here at the seven-second mark. Louisville cannot afford to go down 17-6 here at the half. Florida State's got to make a stop. Florida State must throw the football because if they run it and don't make it, they don't get a chance. Throw it. Jones is the tailback. Rick for Bolden. Out of the end zone. Incomplete. Two seconds left. <laughs> Sapiet Bay Thea on for the field goal attempt. The ball that got the, the, uh, the ball down to the line of scrimmage down to the two-yard line was the previous call in the pass interference. Look how high that throw is. Yeah, it came back down. Yeah, I, that's that's, a, that's a, kind of a, a gray area there. I, you, could, you could see how the official would make that call. And by the way, two officials made the call. Yes. Wasn't one guy. Two guys felt that they saw it. They say a field goal attempt officially 19 yards. I like the way he checked the wind like a golfer for this one. Only 19 yards, Sabiet. And the kick is good, and we have come to the end of the first half. A 20 yard field goal now officially for Bay Fay. 13 6, our halftime score, number four, Florida State, in some trouble. Louisville has given them advantages. Here's Doc with John L. Smith. And, coach, just before halftime, some costly penalties cost you yards and points, and some of those you didn't agree with. <laughs> How could you? You see him on TV. No, I didn't. But we gotta, we gotta quit making mistakes. I mean, we we played as good as we can play the first half. We should have some more points on the board. We've got to do a better job. Defense really stepped up in the first half. Offense, you missed a couple of, of opportunities to score. Oh, great opportunities. We can't get it in. Uh, we've got to do a better job. We're not playing very well. Thanks, coach. At times. Mike, Thank you duck at the half. Louisville has a hundred yards of penalties. Now. 77 yards of total offense. Headed by Circuit City, Florida State leading Louisville 13 to 6. You have eight penalties for 100 yards. Your quarterback, who is a Heisman hopeful, completes only two passes. You make all these mistakes, and Louisville's only down seven to the number four team in the country. So they've got a chance even though they weren't good in the first half. They ha they've had their opportunities inside the five-yard line and have come away with uh, just three points. Uh, you're right. They've made a lot of mistakes. They're very fortunate to be in this game. What can happen now in the second half, they've got to be able to start 
the second half the way they started the first half. They had a big break with special teams, but they've got to get themselves back into this game emotionally, believing that they can win. They can't play any worse as far as the mental mistakes that they made in the first half. I think Florida State, first of all, defensively, I think he better spy somebody on David Ragon because he's making all the yards going back to pass and running. And number two on, Flo and on Louisville's offensive team, I still think they got to do a couple of more things, like you said, throw the ball. But I would not be surprised if Florida State didn't use Nick Maddox for in the second half because he seemed to be... I, I, I just want, I want to see Chris Ricks make a play with the passing game. Yeah. They, they have one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside because Louisville, they have their safeties up the line of scrimmage because of the ability to run the ball with Greg Jones. Chris Ricks... And the Florida State passing game, even with this weather, they've got to make a play throwing the ball downfield. Sneak in the quick halftime numbers, you'll see that the rain really deterred both teams offensively. Uh, 158 for FSU is not bad, 77 for Louisville. Credit the defense, they're playing well. As you see, these two good quarterbacks are 5 of 21. The penalty, third time in five games this year, Louisville has over 100 yards in penalties. It has continued to rain just as heavy. We have an inch and a quarter of rain from this storm with another two inches of rain expected. And a lot of the fans who were here for the first half went home. So the atmosphere has changed in the building. For Fonzo Thorpe, this kickoff return, he's taken down to the 28. And here's Jerry Punch's halftime conversation with Florida State's head coach. Bobby, I heard you address the locker room at halftime, the frustrations and the foolish penalties. What else concerned you here in the second half? Well, you know, what we'd like to do, it's hard to do in the rain. I mean, this is a game we should be throwing the dog on football. They're playing the run pretty good. We're getting people open, but having a hard time throwing the ball. Now, they're having the same thing. You know, both of us would like to throw it better, and we it's going to get down to mistakes, I believe. Whoever makes the fewest mistakes will probably win it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. What can you do? Can you throw the ball? Yeah, I, th I mean, I, I know the conditions are terrible, but I'm telling you, one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Chris Ricks has what it takes to make those throws downfield. He's got to be able to do it at some point in this half. Start on the ground with Jones, who right away gets hit and thrown backwards by Kishan Lowe, the senior out of Hazelhurst, Mississippi. Jones, who had gone those 59 carries without losing yardage for the second time tonight, is not back from the line. They talked yesterday to Louisville coaches about having to move their defensive front, slanting them from left to right, taking some chances. And this time, you can see Lowe slants, gets right underneath the block of Todd Williams and comes up with a big stop to push Greg Jones back. Jones just 10 carries for 20 yards to them. Second and 13 inside handoff, Nick Maddox. That's what Lee was talking about. It's about six yards, and Josh Minkins, who has been everywhere for Louisville defensively, comes up to make the play. It's obvious for me up there, Bobby's frustrated, the offensive coaches are frustrated, Kirk's frustrated, I'm frustrated about Rick's being able to throw the football. I think that Rick's, Rick, they don't have enough confidence in Chris Rick's now to throw a wet ball. I don't think they have confidence in him, Kirk, and I think they're worried about his ability to throw a wet ball. What do you think? Well, I think, like I, well, I think they're concerned right now with just trying to get anything going with their passing game. I think it's Chris Rick's and it's also the receivers. Third and seven. Rick's looking downfield, taken off, and brought down. Chadley out of Bradenton, Florida. I don't think Chris Ricks has any idea how to play in this kind of weather and the way their defense is. Because when he drops back in this one, Kirk, he goes three steps and boom, he's gone. Look, he doesn't even give the play a chance to develop. Well, that's the big issue right now with the Florida State coaches. Patience in the pocket for Chris Rick. There's, you know, there's no reason to get out of there. He's got to be able to sit in there, wait for the play to develop, and if his primary receiver isn't there, find the check down. They, you know, and Chris knows that. Chance Waltney had one kick block. This is a very nice kick to Damian Dorsey, backpedaling at the 20. And brought down at the 31-yard line, ran right into the left arm of Alan Augustus, the backup linebacker. 37 is the net on the punt, 48 the kick, 11 the return. So Rich, the Californian, continues to sit in this rain as we remind you that Iowa takes on Penn State. Our college football Saturday begins on ESPN from Happy Valley. Mistake-free football for Zach Mills. No interceptions this year, guys. And in prime time, presented by U.S. Postal Service, Alabama takes on Arkansas. Talk to Houston Nutt today, fired up for this game. The fact it's in Fayetteville. Expecting a big crowd, and that'll be an exciting game to see. I like Prime the, time. I like the tide. Do you? I'm not giving up on the tide, right. even though they're on probation. 
Now they're playing hard. We have not seen receiver Dante Spillman tonight as Dave Ragone throws complete to his replacement, Victor Glenn, the junior from Ormond Beach, Florida. Spillman, who's shared the leading receiver role with 19 catches with Ronnie Jett, did not play at all in the first half, and I've been told it's a disciplinary thing. They weren't sure if he was going to be out the entire game. We don't see him thus far to start the second half. So a big receiving weapon, Spillman right out of Valley High School here in Louisville, not there for Ragone. His second out run, Henry Miller to the 44-yard line for number 44, a seven-yard pickup. So that's Jerry Punch. Guys at halftime in the Seminole locker room, Bobby Bowden stood up and challenged his defense. The message was very simple. He simply said, guys, if they don't score, we win. I know it's ugly out there, but if you suffer from scoring, we'll win this football game. And oh, by the way, we need some turnovers. Jerry, it sounds like from what you said and Bobby coming out of the locker room, he's worried. That was the message, and I sort of got watching him walk around. He pranced the locker room the whole half and talked to a lot of different players. I think there's a lot of concern here. They're definitely in a dogfight, and the conditions here, the weather is getting worse. The longer this game goes, goes on and it's competitive, the more Louisville believes that they can play with Florida State peak at the super Doppler radar during halftime and the colors are getting brighter. That means the forecast is getting darker. Gone throws incomplete. Try to come underneath to Joshua Tinch. The sophomore out of Albany, Georgia. But looking from up here from a coach's standpoint, it looks like David Ragone at least could throw the football straight. Looks like he's got control of the ball, but Chris Ricks does not have confidence enough to throw the ball downfield. You see the same thing I'm seeing? Well, and again, we talked about growing up in, in Northeast Ohio with the, the weather conditions, being a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, he, he's used to dealing with difficult conditions and throwing the ball. Henry Miller runs it across midfield to the 49, third at about four coming up. Miller's done a nice job as the running back for this team, took over the job the last two games. Well, Louisville can hang in the third quarter. Florida State has seen fourth quarter struggles. Remember, Iowa State came back on them late in the fourth quarter. Now, the points scored by Virginia and Duke were cosmetic scores at the end of the game. But it's been Florida State hasn't been able to do this year. Finish. In a close game, we'll see what happens. Third and four. We're going to throw the jet. First down for the tight end at the FSU 42. This is one-on-one. -on -one. This is back. This is just basketball. Ronnie Jett going against Michael Boulware. Option route. Cuts it to the inside. And that is Dave Ragone's security blanket. This is his favorite target this year. Losing Deion Branch, Zeke Cooper to the NFL. These guys were great players. And now you have Ronnie Jett coming back this year. And when it's third and short, you know that Dave Ragone's going to look him up. First and ten from out of the gun. Taken off. Gets it out to the 38-yard line. That's about four and a half first down yards for Ragone. You mentioned Jets coming back on the field. His tight end, the security blanket. He's a Florida guy, as we mentioned before, from Lakeland. And he told me yesterday, Florida State hurt me because they showed me no love. no love. And that's a nice way they, they didn't knock on my door. And it's understandable. Unless you were the best of the best, Florida State's not coming. Can't get them all? Yeah. Can't okay. take them all every year. Got so many scholarships. <laughs> Jeff was good wasn't at the top of the list. The tight end position was backed up. It doesn't mean anything to him tonight. He's trying to prove it. Miller gets about a yard. And that's about it. Third down coming up. And we have gone five minutes without a flag. All right. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's, that's big. <laughs> that is real big. <laughs> After the 14 that we had in the first half. When we talked to John L. Smith yesterday in our meeting. He said that all these third down situations the key guy was going to be Jet across the middle, delaying or option routes because he's got great size at 6'3", 232 against the linebackers from Florida State. Let's see if he goes to him again. Jets the tight end. 86. He releases off the line from the right. Ragone taking off, trying to pick up the first down. Kendall Pope has him. Two yards shy. A marker came down in the holding spot. down if uh, Florida State declines the penalty. FSU going to back him up here. Let's see. The play got it out to the 34. 
from there, it would have been a 51-yard field goal. Going to push him back. Give him another chance. Ninth accepted penalty on Louisville. You saw Ragon again. He's shoes untied. He lost the uh, thing around his waist to keep his hands dry. <laughs> it's all right. Good kid, isn't he? Great kid. Yeah. And, you know, and style points uh, are something that I think are probably down the list for him on a priority list. Tough, competitive, stubborn. All-state performer at St. Ignatius in Cleveland. Boy, does he have wheels. This guy's fat. We're going? Oh, there's a story there. Hang on a second. Third and 17. And he takes his shot at the 44, and they'll punt it from there. Good play by B.J. Ward, who's got a couple of uh, kick blocks this year. B.J., the sophomore from Texas, shaking up. He ran into the big quarterback. Yeah. See, Ragon is 6'4", 250, okay? But he brings a wallop. And because of his size, you look at him 6'4", 250, and you think he's slow. As a matter of fact, there are two analysts who I know who are on a video game. And did, were you with us when Ragon told us no, the story? No, he wasn't. No, I wasn't there. So Ragon's doing the video game. I mean, all the kids play. All, all oh. these college players talk to these guys about the video game. Okay? The video game's bigger than the game. And they love, they the play it all the time. Huge. So Ragon says to Herb Street, I'm mad at you. I need to take something up with you. Because what would you yeah. say on the video game? I, I, I said that he's, he's not real athletic. <laughs> I, you know, the, <laughs> me in the game. Yeah, right. I, in the game. In, in the, the game, game. I, I said, boy, that was a decent move for a guy who's not real athletic, evidently. <laughs> like, I knew that I was saying it about it, but he, he got upset. He oh, said, boy. He <laughs> I said, I'll make it up to you tonight. I, you know, we'll go out and we'll talk about Because he really has shown some speed. Yeah. His, Wait, what's his 40 time? I think he said 4, 6, 8, 4, 7. And he's, he's, a, he's a big guy at 250 pounds, but he's much quicker and elusive than you would think by looking at him with his size. Remember, also, he was an outstanding basketball player at St. Ignatius up there in Cleveland. And if you could do that in that Cleveland area, you're a pretty good basketball player. You're a pretty good athlete. That's true. Let's talk about Ragone, big quarterbacks at 6'4", 250. Lisa Gent is big tight end. He's bigger than his tight end. He's an inch taller and 15 pounds heavier. Well, they saw him the, the big game. That's the big one right there. Goes Jared Lorenzo from undefeated Kentucky. We saw Byron Leftwich take on Virginia Tech and put up an impressive show at 6'6", 240. Plus. And this is the trend in football now. The big quarterback, like Dante Culpepper. You see all these guys who are now seniors or moving on close to their NFL days. And look at Ragone. He's gone up 50 pounds since he came from Cleveland here to Louisville from the redshirt season on through this fifth and little, final year. A little misleading. You see 200 to 250, you think, oh, he's, you know, he's, he's putting on some weight. He's about, what, 3% body fat? I mean, he is a good 250. He's not a, he's not a heavy guy. He's, he's all muscle. B.J. Ward looks really banged up. This was the time with him on the field and on the sideline. Meantime, here's Talashka on to punt for Louisville. They will attempt to down it. The two. Who got it? Josh Minkins, who's been everywhere all night, made the play after a 42 yard kick. Well done by Talaska. Long field for the Knowles when you come back to Louisville. Mario? Laura! Mario's back. Hey Mo, what's better than one tire at a great price? Four great tires, Manny? Exactly. How about four great tires starting at less than $100? Four tires starting at less than $100? Now that's great. Great is what we do best. Yeah, boys, we're car people. Lee Corso, future sportscaster star. Uh, Kurt, you can take the helmet off. Oh, okay. And you're ready. I'll get it. Mind if I stand? Yo. Testing. One, two, three. Getting this or what? 
Send in your one-minute audition tape to the Discover card gets you on Game Day Challenge. If you win, you'll appear on College Game Day and go to the BCS National Championship. Visit your local Best Buy for details. And when you're at Best Buy, use your Discover card. You'll earn a cashback bonus award and automatically be entered for a chance to win college football and home entertainment prizes. Just another way it pays to discover. Even under stress, Arid has the strength to help stop your worst smelling sweat. Arid, Arid strength under stress. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City coming to you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the remnants of Tropical Storm Isidore, making it a driving rainstorm and a sloppy game between number four Florida State and Louisville. A reminder that ESPN's College Football Saturday begins with the Big Ten. Penn State's lost to Iowa at home the last two times. We'll see what the Nittany Lions, number 12 in the country, can do. Then our primetime game will be Alabama and Arkansas, presented by U.S. Postal Service, 745 Eastern, out of the Southeastern Conference. Due to time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. Sorry, I got that receipt in here somewhere. Driver's license, bus transfer, dollar off fish sticks. Actually? Floss. <laughs> Just in case. Um, movie stub, m mint. Actually, we keep everything right here. Just in case. Right. Just in case. People lose stuff. That's why we can store purchase and warranty information automatically, so you won't have to search anymore. Circuit City, we're with you. Floss. <laughs> Who flosses anyway? I floss. I floss too. <laughs> I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. Direct Investing. That's Harris Direct. Introducing the new S-Type. Sometimes an object of desire gets more intriguing, more provocative, and more irresistible. The closer you get. The new 2003 S-Type, beyond beautiful. For exceptional values on the S-Type, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. When the Navy sought a power source for a new generation of ship, we had the right energy. When the nation called for better hurricane forecasting, conditions here were perfect. And when a life-saving cancer drug was in short supply, we had the right chemistry. How fast do ideas move? At the speed of imagination. Florida State University. Ideas that move. ESPN College Football Thursday Night. Presented by Circuit City. Brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. And by the new 2003 Jaguar S-Type. Jaguar, the art of performance. The alma mater of Burt Reynolds and Gabrielle Reese leading the alma mater of Senator Mitch McConnell and NPR's Bob Edwards. Bob Edwards, one of the famous U of L grads. Alongside host of the public radio morning show, morning edition. Ragone hit the ball and his first down throw. Out of bounds, incomplete. Oh. J.R. Russell, the sophomore from Tampa, was over there on the sideline. It's a great call, though. I, I, I like that bootleg to get the guard out in front of him and get him away from the pressure. 
talked about the game, coming into the game, Florida State, their defensive ends, how much pressure can they get on Dave Ragone? Well, Alonzo Jackson has answered the bell. He has three sacks tonight by himself in the first half, so he's played well. And I think Louisville is just trying to mix it up, just try to keep Florida State's defensive line off balance by giving them a bunch of different looks. Alonzo only had one in the first four ball games, Kirk, so big performance statistically tonight. Kendall Pope coming in off the right side. They pick him up. Underneath it's caught by Damian Dorsey. And a first down for Louisville at the 40. Approaching six minutes. Tropical storm Isidore's remnants have dumped an inch and a half of rain in Louisville, Kentucky, and there's more on the way. Heavy rain has made for a sloppy game. Unpoised plays led to 16 penalties by both sides. Louisville had first and goal from the two twice. Only three points to show from those situations. Henry Miller's the leading carrier from the running back spot. But Dave Vergone has more rushing yards than anybody else. The quarterbacks have been kind of running for themselves because things haven't been open downfield. This interception by Terrell Hudson came on fourth and goal in the opening quarter when it was tied at three. Florida State's touchdown, Chris Ricks to Tallman Gardner, 23 yards, one of four completions for Ricks on the night. He's 4 of 15, Ragone's 5 of 13. Ragone, the Jets, couldn't hang on. Jerome Carter, the rover, was in coverage. Jens almost able to pull it down. Again, that was a nice play call, Kirk, because they faked the bootleg one way and came back. And he runs Jen on a little post corner. And Jen's 6'3", and Carter is six foot. And he had it right there. He had it in the edge of his hands. But I tell you what, you said it before. I like the play calling right now of John Bettis, the offensive coordinator. He's keeping Florida State off balance. Yeah, they'll, they'll take that matchup any time they can get it. Jen against Carter, one-on-one. -on -one. Needing to get to the 30. Time to throw. It's caught. The mark should be shy of the first down. Let's see. That's a good mark. Joshua Tinch caught it. It's where the ball is when his knee comes down. And probably it's going to be just shy. And it's fourth down. What do you want to do here? Well, I'd go for it. i go for it. I'd absolutely go for it. For, all of a sudden, Louisville's starting to find some things. You mentioned Pettis, the offense coordinator. What they're doing is they're giving the inside receivers the option route. And it's really working out nicely where the inside receiver comes in. And it's there. It's been there for Ragone. Big quarterback trying to get that half a yard. Ragone falls forward, and uh, depending on the spot, should have it. Let's see where that spot's coming here. <laughs> 250 pounds. You just lower that shoulder like a fullback. Quick count. Yeah. He's going to measure, but I believe he has the first down. See? fans here saw the replay of the reception but it was absolutely the correct call because the ball was in the left hand of the receiver which was closer to the goal back behind you not in the right hand which would have been closer to the first down mark half the ball here those are the ball <laughs> nice look there guys our producer Tom Archer our director Mike Schwab and we wish we could mention every one of our camera operators, audio operators, Dr. Jerry Punch on the sideline in this uh, driving rainstorm. They have uh, been smooth and error-free, unlike the teams tonight. Way to go, guys. But that was also a good picture of how wet the football is. Yes. Did you notice how soaked like it is? algae. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just nasty. <laughs> algae covering that ball. Oh, you ever, there it is. You ever leave a ball out in the backyard on accident, pick it up in the morning, and you try to... It's like a... You know, <laughs> throw it in the creek with the crawdads. It's terrible.
the extra point. With all the wet conditions, snap and hold the court. Richard Owens and Stefan LaForce for the war zone. Smoke coming through from the fireworks <laughs> makes it tough on your kicker. Well, Joshua Kitch didn't play football his senior year of high school. His great hands. Going to be a two or a three for Rick Pitino in the land where football used to be a distraction before basketball practice started. Number nine with a slam dunk. New game at 13. I will own a Jaguar. I will own a Jag. A Jaguar. I will know the joys of all-wheel drive. Stand. I will own a Jaguar. I will. I will. Speed sensitive steering. Standard. Complimentary scheduled maintenance. Standard. The Jaguar's mine. I will own a Jaguar. For exceptional values on the X-Type, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. Told you if we showed up late, we'd never find a place to sit. Check it out! We're so close we can practically taste the action. Yeah! Bud Light is proud to sponsor seven-time Supercross champion Jeremy McGrath. Keeps you going. Achieve New Balance. The heat is on when mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four, four. You've got to be insane. Own the DVD and VHS. The ultimate power of victory. Who God first? Is yours to experience again and again. The Scorpion King. Catch this. Buy it on DVD and VHS October 1st. That picture says more than I can. Good drive and Ragone was solid. Okay, good. 19 minutes and 5 seconds left in the game. And Louisville on its home field in a driving rainstorm has the number four team in the country on the ropes, tied at 13. Way to last his kickoff. Short one. Got to make sure you get a hand on it. The line ball! It's still free! And a smart play to knock it out of bounds by Patrick Newton of Florida State. That ball was live and free and recoverable, and Louisville had a shot at it. Newton was heads up and knocked it out of bounds. Mike, you said it's a live football, and my gosh, that ball almost got recovered right there. By Joe Gannon. <laughs> Gannon almost came up with it. And you're right, Newton, very smart just to deflect that out of bounds to give Florida State the ball. They're very lucky there. But one of the hardest things in the world to do is to jump on a wet ball and recover it. I know. <laughs> Squirts right up. Especially at full speed. Yeah, did you see that? <laughs> that was a good coaching move. Yeah. If you go with that kickoff. Game. Absolutely. From the 22. Four in the pattern for Ricks. Complete to Morgan. In front of Minkins. Eight of nine. Go back to that Louisville touchdown. Florida State gambled. Mickey Andrews elected to blitz Kendall Pope. By blitzing, now he's got everybody manned up here on the outside. And Finch, much taller at 6'2", against Samuels, who is 5'9 and a half, 5'10". Nothing fancy, just goes right by him. The ball is thrown in front of him, leading him to the end zone for the touchdown. But the blitz by Florida State put him in man-to-man, -man and Dave Ragone made him pay for it. Second and one. Jones and Maddox together in the backfield. Jones locks for 
Maddox, who picked up the first down to the 37. Curry Burns, the strong safety from Miami's Jackson High School, made the play. They were going with some great passes this time because the, the offensive coordinator, John Pettis, was calling the right calls. They were inside patterns. The reason why these are easier to throw is they're not that far down the field. He could zip the ball, and then he goes over the top. Kirk, the reason why that play worked also was the fact they picked up the blitz. Yeah. Remember I told you about blitzing in the wet weather? Uh -huh. I don't like to do it because you give up too many big plays. Make them drive a long way. They got feet on that blitz. After Florida State's second first down of this half, Louisville showing some heat, and they back out. Wide open, Tolman Gardner. Down the soft spot in the zone, got bent back like a pretzel. Galachaw hit him up high. It's good to see the senior from New Orleans get up after the gain of 11. And let's see, it should be another Florida State first down. And it is. Love with, with, I love Bobby Bowden right now and Jeff Bowden, what they're doing. They're, they're, they're putting the game in Chris Ricks' hands, even though he hasn't played that well up to this point with the weather. They see that the Louisville corners are, are respecting Florida State's speed at receiver. They're eight and ten yards off the line of scrimmage. Florida State's just throwing it right underneath the coverage and picking up eight and ten yards at a time against those soft corners. There they are again on the outside. They heat them up this time. They try to bring the blitz with Burns, who got picked up. Going underneath all day. And Quan Bolden. You got better athletes that can make the play across the 40 and to the 37-yard line. More pushing and shoving behind the play as well, but this time... No flag, pick up a 15. I don't mean that disrespect right. to the Louisville guy. Sure, so you throw it underneath. If they're going to give you that soft coverage, you're just going to make a simple read here. The outside guy is going to run a slant, the inside guy to the outside. Now you're just going to read 24. He sat in the middle. He felt a little bit more comfortable throwing it to Bolton. Make them come up. And then when they come up, aha, we got you. Then you go over the top with the speed of the receivers. Jones and Maddox again in the backfield. Profonzo Thorpe is in the game, the sophomore big play threat. Number one, Maddox Rock. Oh, so good at finding that crease to the 27 yard line in the first down. Love watching Nick Maddox, senior from North Carolina, run. Sunday Night Football on ESPN. Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss. Such a tumultuous week. You wonder how they'll do. It's the long trip out to Seattle to play the Seahawks. A uh, very tough test in the early days of the Mike Tice regime uh, with Moss's uh, arrest earlier this week. That's right after prime time on Sunday night on ESPN. And if you didn't see Andrea's exclusive with Randy Moss on SportsCenter earlier, stay through after the game. Emotional interview from Randy Moss. First and ten from the 27. Tolman Gardner. To the 23. He picked up four yards. Attitude is so hard to gauge from this far back. But you saw Louisville come out. It damned the torpedoes. It's raining. We're going to throw the ball. And they did successfully on that drive. And it's almost that cue has given Florida State the same resolve. Well, we talked, even with these conditions, both teams, to move the ball, are going to have to have some success throwing. And right now, the teams are making adjustments, and they're being able to get things done through the air. Both teams here these last two drives. Ricks on this drive. Kirk is 4 of 4 for 40 yards. Set to take off this time. Chased by Dwayne White. Blocked from Bolden. And Fritz kept going. Got a couple of yards. Was pushed out of bounds. No flag at the 23. Kirk mentioned it, how much Anquan Bolden I, loves I, to block. I, get, yeah. I, get real, I almost, <laughs> you almost get too excited. When you see a receiver who's willing to come after Dwayne White. Dwayne White is an All-American defensive end. He weighs almost 290 pounds. Watch how excited Bolton gets here. Okay, I got it. I got it. Boom! But you remember, it's all it's third down. I know. I mean, it's not like the guy made 146 I yards. I know. I just lost <laughs> Third and five. Needing to get to the 17. Rick's going to run for it and get there. Oh, First wow. down. He slides at the proper spot. And Rick's hobbled as he gets up. 
And if he goes down, they got number five, Adrian McPherson, ready. The offensive line does a nice job of picking up all the blockers coming in, and he slides and gets the first down. If he goes down, McPherson is a good-looking athlete, number five, that can throw the football. He hit nine for 15 for 125 yards and two touchdowns against Duke last week. If Ricks goes down, Florida State's got a good guy coming in. I tell you what, you watch the replay. You see how perfect that the uh, yellow line is in there. You see the replay right, with right the there. line? Yep, yeah. right there. Yeah, and he's short. When the knee comes down, he's short. Yep. It's, it's impossible to mark, but there's the knee down. There's the ball on the other side of the line. Where the ball is when the first knee hits the ground. They don't have the advantage, obviously, of the yeah, replay. But, yeah. And officials will tell you that's such a hard thing to spot in the middle of the field. One first down on the first two drives. Five first downs on this drive for Florida State. Play nine is a run with Greg Jones. White takes him down with Florida. Play White fired up right now, making plays. We always talk about Florida State and Miami, the defense is how tough it is to run east and west to get to the outside. Hey, what, this Louisville defense, they're athletic, they're aggressive, and right now they, they are flying. It's very tough, I think, for Greg Jones in this kind of game. We thought it'd be a Greg Jones game with the weather. It's more of a Nick Maddox kind of game because he's seeing the hole and he's exploding in there. Greg, I think, needs a little bit more time to allow the play to develop. Just 11 carries, 16 yards for Jones tonight. Rick says five options to throw. He's going in zone. Touchdown, Tobin Gardner. Second hookup of the night. Chris Ricks, who was 4 of 15 coming into that drive, was a perfect 5 for 5 leading to the score. Great team's answer. Away from home. There's an answer. The There's an answer. Javier Bethea on for the extra point. He got that down. Javier Bethea knocks it through. <laughs> <laughs> or, better known as... The X-Men. 20 to 13, Seminole. Remember we talked about the corners from Louisville sitting back. It was almost like they were allowing them to move the ball downfield. That time, Gallishaw walked up Good into the line of scrimmage and decided to try to take on Gardner. Man to man tight. Safety bit on the inside receiver. And look at that. That is a perfectly thrown football by Chris Ricks. Well, that Chris Ricks has done a nice job. Watch his follow through. Looks real good. But there's a guy named Marambo, the center, number 52, who snapped every single shotgun snap perfect on that drive. They were not under the center one time, but Rambo snapped the ball perfect every time. That guy deserves a lot of credit also. Rambo was injured earlier in the game, and Tallman Gardner, now a couple of touchdowns here on the night for one of the talented Florida State receivers. And has given the Seminoles a seven-point lead as Xavier uh, can't Andrew find Pat. the kicking tee. Xavier Bethea, the kicker, need a tee. Got one, there we go. Both times Gardner's been able to score touchdowns, it's been the same route. A yep. seam post where they try to get the free safety occupied to get it out of the middle of the field, and they've been successful both times. And you can see Chris Ricks, that's a pass that he feels very comfortable in throwing. Got back, took his hitch, and let it go. Led Gardner perfectly into the end zone. Roderick Clark for Louisville started this game with a 64-yard kick return, led to the opening field goal for the Cardinals. He's back waiting for Bethea's kick now. From the two. Not much there. Well covered. And the man who made one of the key plays on that last drive, Patrick Newton. Remember that pooch kickoff? It was yes. just laying there, and he knocked it out of bounds. He makes the special teams tackle here. Former walk-on who earned a scholarship a few years ago, and uh, what he's done at Florida State is play special teams for about three years. And those things don't go unnoticed by coaches. You know he's a gamer when he's got the eye black along with the band-aid, the black band-aid all across. It's all just one line across there. He's serious. It's a good look all the way across. Oh yeah, that's a seminal look. 
with that door pin. Again, that's a war paint. Final dozen seconds of this third quarter. Let's see if Ragone can respond to the response. Try to go up top right away. Terrific catch by the man who caught the touchdown, Joshua Tinch, at the 45. 27 yards. That is a timing route between Tinch and, and Dave Ragone. Dave Ragone took the snap, dropped back three steps, and just threw it to the outside shoulder of Tinch to let him run right underneath it. And that ball was thrown right where it had to be. It was a pretty good catch, too. Yeah, but Leroy Smith, again, was man-on-man -man coverage yep. in the rain with no help in the backfield. No I don't understand it. it. I don't understand it. They just got beaten. And all of a sudden, now they come back and do the same thing. Beaten earlier on this 30-yarder from Ragone to Tinch that put the Cardinals even with Florida State at 13. And Tallman Gardner responded with one from Chris Ricks for FSU. Off we go to the fourth quarter. Seminoles 20, Cardinals 13 on College Football Thursday night. Presented by Circuit City. Introducing the new S-Type. Sometimes an object of desire gets more intriguing. More provocative. And more irresistible. The closer you get. The new 2003 S-Type, beyond beautiful. For exceptional values on the S-Type, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. your enemies with new moves, interactive environments, and new fighters. It's a legend so deep, no one just plays it. They live it. Oh. Oh. Tekken 4, ready T for Teen. I'm the new BK value menu. What are you hungry for? Bacon cheeseburger. Bacon cheeseburger? Plain broiled. Just like your hair. <laughs> the new BK value menu's here. 11 items for 99 cents every day. Even under stress, Arid has the strength to help stop your worst smelling sweat. Arid, strength under stress. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City coming to you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The remnants of Tropical Storm Isidore making it a driving rainstorm in a sloppy game between number four Florida State and Louisville. A reminder that ESPN's College Football Saturday begins in the Big Ten. Penn State's lost to Iowa at home the last two times. We'll see what the Nittany Lions, number 12 in the country, can do. Then our primetime game will be Alabama and Arkansas, presented by U.S. Postal Service, 745 Eastern, out of the Southeastern Conference. Due to time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. The most popular outdoor show ever created is back. Hosted by Rick Schroeder, joined by top celebrities and athletes, powered by a love of things wild and natural. The New American Sportsman, Mondays at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Jennifer Garner is Sidney Bristow, a top secret, undercover master of disguise, government agent, who's so hot, TV guy needs three separate covers just to cover her. Please. Alias, the excitement begins Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. I am an athlete. I am an athlete. I move beyond old limitations and allow myself to express freely, freely and, create and creatively. I rely on my team, team, my family, and my community for support. For support. And they rely on me for effort and enthusiasm in competition and in life. And in life. I am strong, strong, capable, and perfect just the way I am. Just the way I am. Conference USA. Be there. Some choices in life are easy, like having your baby delivered by a doctor you can trust. 
or staying with the same pediatrician throughout their childhood. Making the right choices can mean living a healthier life. With our many benefits, the choice is easy. And the change is good. Choose CHA Health, and you can feel good about your health care coverage. Hey, I'm Terry Miners. By now, you know I love Inside Digital. And I'm Bob Sekoler. Inside DB is the high-speed internet service I can't live without. Now you can get both hooked up at the same time for just $4.95. $4.95 for both? $4.95. It's Insight Double Play. Call today for Insight Double Play with HBO and get Insight Digital and Insight BB for just $79.95 per month for the first three months. Call Insight today at 357-4400 and score with, with Insight Double Play. Louisville's had the ball in this second half. Each possession has taken it into Florida yes. State territory. Lee. And they, what they're doing is picking on the corners from Florida State. The Florida State is not changing the coverage. Uh, and I'm they're just changing the people. But unless they put a little double coverage there, I'm telling you, they're really them. I'm guessing that they won't get back into man coverage the rest of this game. They're, they're playing a little bit softer zone now. We're going to hit his last five. He's looking down deep for tips. that one's coming back in play for a while. <laughs> it's been a chore for uh, folks on the sideline to keep the balls as dry as possible on this rainy night. All right, so we'll have third and five coming up here. Okay, they're sitting back now. See that? They were bumped up right in the face of those receivers when they were getting beat. Five to choose from. Here's the fifth option. T.J. Patterson, first down to the 16. Uh, Patterson hung in there until he saw no blitz coming. Was released. Dave Ragone hung in there. It's very, very good decision. Looking downfield, looking downfield. Wanted to get the ball downfield. He also wants to run because he's had some success. Look at him sitting there, sitting there, outlet. Remember to find the outlet, dumped it off. Very good job by Patterson to pick it up. Jason Spitz, we called it for a holding one time, but that time he takes a nice block. The pass protection of Louisville has been very good in keeping Dave Bragone's ability to throw the football. Also, he's able to, there, there seems there for him to step up into the pocket. Bragone's 9 of 13 throwing in this half, guys, in this weather. In the red zone. See the time? One more time. Take it down to the seven yard line. So Patterson, two receptions as we're going, is orchestrating with his tight end, Ronnie Gent. Just keeping an idea on everyone. All available out there as this game gets late. Those of you set for Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done. Certainly have a lot to talk about about this one. 20 to 13, the number four team in the country, Florida State, is being pushed to the wall. Weather, yes. Cardinals as well. Patterson to the one-yard line. It's first and goal, Louisville. They've been here twice before and have come away with three points. Now they have a chance to tie the game on first and goal from inside the two. And that's good for number. Look at this Florida State defense right now. And I know they rotate a lot of bodies. Guys, they look tired, hands on their hips. You don't see the fire. When they can't, they've come up with two big goal line stands in this football game to hold. That's why they have this lead. So they have it in them again to step up and make the plays that they have to. First and goal again down inside this two-yard line. One back team, no lead blocker. Cost them last time. We're going to throw. Get rid of it. And he does. And they throw flags. As Rufus Brown was locked up there with Damian Dorsey. Be a defensive hold in the end zone in all likelihood. You might be sitting at home. 
don't say uncatchable, but defensive hole takes the unquestionable question. Sorry about that. Out of play. If I've seen one weakness to the Louisville football team, it's the inside the red zone offense with a one-back offense. I strongly recommend that John L. Smith and his staff to get themselves a lead blocker and go after people inside the red zone. They might score here, but I'm telling you, they're having a hell of a time getting it in there. You get Henry Miller back there. Or somebody. Get a big fullback sure. and lead up in there. But I... From the one, we're going rolling. Rolling. Touchdown. Dorsey. trigger for Stefan LaForce, the holder. The kicker's Nate Smith. They have done a good job tonight. An answer to the answer from Louisville. Ragone, eight of his last nine, two touchdown passes. This one to the senior Damian Dorsey, his first of the year, ties the game at 20. Hey, Mikey. Here's our TV, 57-inch wide screen. It's even better than last week. Can we take it home this time? Therein lies the problem, Peter. The minute we take it home, I'm going to see it on sale. You know, with Circuit City's Price Match Plus, you don't have to worry about that. Huh. Don't worry, take it home. Because if you find a lower price within 30 days of purchase, we'll give you back 110% of the price difference. Circuit City, we're with you. Does this mean my video game system can come home, too? <laughs> America is traveling with Michelin. Right now, buy any four Michelin tires and get a Samsonite wheeled carry-on upright and the new Michelin North America Road Atlas free, a value of over $120. Michelin for your nearest participating Michelin dealer and get rolling. But hurry, this offer ends October 5th. Thursday night presented by Circuit City coming to you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The remnants of Tropical Storm Isidore making it a driving rainstorm in a sloppy game between number four Florida State and Louisville. A reminder that ESPN's college football Saturday begins with the Big Ten. Penn State lost to Iowa at home the last two times. We'll see what the Nittany Lions, number 12 in the country, can do. Then our primetime game will be Alabama and Arkansas presented by U.S. Postal Service, 745 Eastern out of the Southeastern Conference. Due to time constraints, we have to move ahead in our coverage, and it will continue right after this. Today, seems like everybody's getting back to nature. Nice to know some of us never left.
Boys Futura tires on every truck on the road. That's a lot of truck tires, Manny. Let's roll out Futura Scrambler truck and SUV tires starting at just $49.99 each. Whoa, at $49.99 each, everyone will have Futura Scramblers. Hey, boys, we're car people. What color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste whitens your teeth with just one tube. Our whitening guide proves you can go from here to here. Arm & Hammer, whiter teeth, one tube, guaranteed. Yeah, but hurry. This better be quick. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, there's no way we can beat dollar trades. Hey, how are ya? The meeting's starting. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. Yes. Dollar.com? Yeah, from now on. I can't afford us. When it's your money you're spending, log on for our lowest rates at dollar.com. We're back at Louisville. There is one second left in the fourth quarter. Everybody left the field for overtime, but Ricks, the quarterback, was right there with the referee and told him, I want timeout at one second. The clock showed triple zeros, but he got the timeout, and it's what we were suggesting, to take the shot down the field. They're not going to return it, you would think, 90 yards right. for a touchdown. So one play left in regulation. This game is not over yet. A jump ball for Bolden, perhaps? See if he can, with these conditions, how far he can throw it. Ricks buys himself some space, unloads down the field. It's out of bounds, and now we will go to overtime. As we said, first overtime ever for Florida State. Louisville one and one in overtime. We're back for those. hasn't been the night you thought you'd see. That's why I always say sports is the best reality TV. Now, who would have thought a driving yeah, rainstorm, sure. tropical storm, Isidore, you know, churning out in the Gulf, comes up the Ohio Valley. We're on our way to two inches of rain probably during this game tonight. Field holds up. Florida State comes up. Doesn't play its best game. Pull around and find yourself in overtime. For the uninitiated, we'll have a coin toss coming up here in a minute. Your choice is offense, defense, or into the field. You almost always take defense first and then get your hands on the ball second. It's like an inning in baseball. Each team gets one possession from the 25, then you flip-flop who gets it first until we decide a winner. No game clock, only the play clock, and teams must go for two once we get to the third overtime. Think I back to that wild game with Ole Miss that Ole Miss lost oh, to the seven OTs. I'm seeing Parker. more and more thoughts about this in the National Football League wanting yes. to do this because they're getting dissatisfied with the fact that most of the time, the team that wins the toss wins the ball game. 
what we're going to do is this. We're going to toss the coin. We'll have one coin toss. This team captains your call. The winner of the toss gets to choose offense, defense, or end of the field in the overtime period. Now, we will go to the first period. There's no deferral, by the way. You've got to make the choice. The loser of the toss gets the, uh, the, uh, the other choices that are left. This is one big offense. It's automatic. The other one takes the end of the field that we play on. Each team gets a series at the same end of the field for the overtime period. You start first and ten and go to either fail to make the first down or you score, okay? You get one timeout per period, and that's it. No carryover. Same coin I got here, gentlemen, the head and the tail. Who's going to call it? Call it. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. Let it hit the ground. What is it? Head. Is it head? Is it head? And it is a tail. It is a tail. You have won the toss. You can see my fifth defense in the field. Jack showed just the referee <laughs> nice to job. give him an A plus. Perfect. That was perfect. I say what, Jack was all over the place. Dial it. We had a we had the sheet to cheat off of. Jack's been out there for three and a half hours and he didn't miss a thing. Oh man. So now in overtime you start with the ball at the 25. You start essentially in field goal range. Right. And now you work from there. And what's your philosophy? Do you like to take a shot down the field or do you want to take this move down methodically? If I was Florida State, I'd try to move the ball methodically and score because I don't think they can stop David the goal on the 25 yard line here. That guy's pretty good running the football. But I do like one thing. I think Florida State chose the right way to go, which was a, a, this way instead of a towards those fans. The other thing is, Florida State hasn't had any success here in the second half. Outside of when, when Louisville was in man coverage, right. and they were able to hit them. Since they've gone to more zone, I think you're going to see that Florida State's going to have to show some patience here. And like Lee said, try to run the ball. Get yeah. Nick Maddox involved and, and try to throw the ball underneath. People are tuning in and they see the number four team in the country, rain or not. Because it rains a lot of places, okay? The number four team usually beats an unranked team. Are you guys surprised that Florida State is now playing for its life here in 0-2? I'm not. I, I mean, I, I, I expected a competitive game on a, on a dry field with maybe the athleticism of Florida State eventually prevailing and, and uh, allowing them to uh, get to a victory. But with these conditions, it's definitely even the playing field out. And Louisville's played with a lot of heart tonight. Bobby Bowden was concerned because of the following reason. He's got his son next week. He's got no Miami after that. He's got no Notre Dame after that. He's got three of the biggest games of his life coming up three weeks from now. And he had to get his team ready for Louisville. On the road. In Louisville. And that wasn't easy. Jerry Quick on the defensive huddle for Louisville. Chris Friedland pulled his defense again. Told him about what overtime's all about. Went over the extra signal they will use in overtime. Cannot afford to have a milk mistake here in a lineup for a coverage in OT. Doc, they won their last one against Kentucky. Lost one at Army on a Thursday night. Ricks gets the first crack. Pump and throw. Intercepted! You can return it and win, but because that happened, all Louisville has to do is kick a field goal, and they win the game. Anthony Floyd made the interception. Floyd, the guy who has more interceptions than any active player currently playing college football. That's number 18 in his career. He had 10 last year to lead the nation, and Chris Ricks with just a poor throw. The ball had to slip out of his hands, and throwing the ball behind the receiver, Floyd's there thinking, man, this one, this one's nice. All right, what are you thinking about the play call? We just went over this. It's a driving rainstorm. You haven't done anything, so you try it down and out and up and boop. I'm telling you, I don't like the call. I said before, what I thought they should do is drive the ball down and try to get something. They're in trouble field goal now. wins. Here's Henry Miller! Henry Miller! Florida wins! Their biggest win ever!
after the Derby. Not tonight. It's a U of L night. And in stunned disbelief, the number four team in the country goes back up the tunnel with its first loss of the season. In overtime, every possession counts. Chris Ricks trying to get the ball downfield, trying to come up with a play. Ball slips out of his hands. The ball's thrown behind it. He knew it as soon as he threw it. And then the very first play, Louisville comes right back. And it's Henry Miller, a guy who was only playing garbage time until a couple of weeks ago, played the fourth quarter against Duke. John L. Smith said, yeah, I'll put him in as my starting back. And John L. Smith's team, four boys, undisciplined early on, a whole bunch of penalties, hung in there, and they have the biggest win in the history of the program. The number nine team in the country was their biggest win when they beat Southern Miss in 81 until tonight. This is college football. This is great. Somewhere down there, Dr. Jerry Punch. And we have caught up with John L. Smith. Incredible. That's all we can say. What an incredible performance by your young player tonight. I'll tell you what, you got to... I don't know what to say, except our kids hung in there. They believed in themselves. And at halftime, we said, if you just believe in one another and keep fighting, because we played pretty darn good the first half. And we just made some mistakes, penalty-wise, that kept us out of the end zone. And I'm so proud of our guys. I can't say, you know, I know. It's a great win for us. John Rigone in the second half, remarkable performance. I tell you what, he's a warrior. We got him settled down a little bit. I tried to tell him, don't. Don't run the ball. You throw the ball. And he came out second half, and I thought, our, our both staffs, offensive staff, defensive staff, did a great job. That's all I can say. They, you told us yesterday these players needed to step up and make it, make a play. Yeah. Offensive and defensively, Coach. Uh, and what does this mean to this program? Well, it's, it's huge for the program. I, to be on TV playing these guys, to have these guys come to our house was huge. And then to beat them here is even bigger. So, who knows? Linda Cohn, Reese Davis, welcome to the show. There needed to be something really big, I mean huge, to knock Randy Johnson, Michael Jordan, and Randy Moss out of our top ten spot on Sports Center on Thursday, and Louisville and Florida State delivered. College football often does, Linda. I keep telling you that. Louisville had pointed <laughs> to the match with Florida State as the night to prove it had arrived as a national power. A two and two start, though it rained on that parade. And Isidore darn near drowned it. But hope floats in Papa John Stadium for Dave Ragone, flying quarterback Bobby Bowden, Ponchos, fourth ranked Knowles. First quarter tied to three. You must be sound in the kicking game. James Green storming through to block it in the villain business deep in Seminole land. Now, first and goal, we're going to try to stick it right up to gut with Henry Miller. Henry Miller getting some time, but he's denied on the goal line. Second and goal. Maybe if Ragone makes a run for the pylon, he gets there. Cut back. No thank you. Third and goal. Miller, bring your feet. Come with bad intentions. Miller stuffed again. Now, Louisville talked it over, decided to go for it on fourth down. They're going to try it by air with their fine left-handed quarterback, Ragone. Not much room to operate. Oh, poor pass to Rell Hudson rising up. And the Seminoles deny the Cardinals at the goal line. Second quarter still tied at three. Florida State second at 11. And this is a driving rain. Seminole still executing the passing game. Rick to Talman Gardner. FSU up 10-3. Louisville played by mistakes in the first half. Here's Corso. I think uh, Louisville made a couple of major mistakes when they got inside the red zone. Number one, I didn't think they went after them with the right play selection, especially on fourth down when they, when Dave Ragone dropped back with only one option to throw the ball. I think they should have rolled out. Kirk and I both agree a bootleg there. And then when they get down first and goal on the two, they have an unnecessary delay of game five-yard penalty, and that ruined them. So it's Louisville that shot themselves in the foot inside the red zone, not Florida State stopping them. We got to quit making mistakes. I mean, we, we played... As good as we can play the first half, we should have some more points on the board. We've got to do a better job. So the current Louisville coach agreeing with the former one, third quarter, 13-6 game. Here is Ragone. Beautifully thrown ball to Joshua Tench, and the Cardinals have tied it at 13. For a minute to go in the third, still tied. Chris Rick had an answer, and again, the answer's name was Talman Gardner. Second touchdown of the game, and the Seminoles surge back on top by seven. Fourth quarter, first and goal for Louisville. Ragone, not huge numbers. Look how hard the rain is coming down. 15 of 27, that one to Damian Dorsey. We are tied at 20. The 
was about that point that people began gathering gopher wood and two of every kind of poncho fan to build an arc, and we went into overtime. New territory for Florida State, and perhaps offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden or Rick or both got greedy. Ball slipped out of his hand, picked by Anthony Floyd, so now Louisville has a chance and a chance to win. Tip a mint julep and play in the puddles, fellas. You have earned it. Louisville beating Florida State 26 to 20 in overtime. The goalpost would come crashing down at Papa John's. Mike Tarico called a class. Mike. Okay, guys, thank you. It is uh, still a shock. Uh, not because Louisville shouldn't have been in this game. They were 2-2 two and two and really misstepped on the way this season. But, Kirk, let's go back to a point you made earlier in general. Coming in, Louisville was back in its old familiar role as the underdog, not the favorite as they were preseason national ranks. Yeah, the players told us yesterday that they were looking forward to playing Florida State because they were back in their familiar role where people didn't give them a chance. Nobody thought coming into this game that they were going to win except themselves and their coaches. And I think you could see in the way they played tonight with the intensity for four straight quarters, they would not be denied. And that was an attitude that was missing, I think, in some of their earlier games. And leave Florida State on the football field couldn't take the crowd or Louisville out of the game. Well, you got to give Coach John L. Smith and his staff a tremendous amount of credit for halftime adjustments. They came out and their offensive staff did a terrific job and they outscored Florida State 20 to 7 in the second half. The defense staff kept Florida State to seven points. That's why they win the football game. I think the adjustments at halftime by the Louisville staff was better. First month of the college football season, although every good team. Florida and Florida State already have a loss, and we haven't hit October. A wild and memorable night, the biggest win in the history of Louisville football. The goalposts come down as they knock off the number four team in the country, 26-20. We send it back to the studio. And it is the first time that Louisville has beaten a top-five team. They've been 0-8 against teams in the top five all time before their victory over Florida State. Highest-ranked team the Cardinals have beaten prior to Thursday night, number nine, Southern Mississippi, back in 1981.